people and welcome to Beginner's Guide to Adobe Camera Raw. This is lesson two. We're going to be moving on and looking at some of the basic adjustment panels today and uh, and the way that they work in Camera Raw. Where we left off in our first lesson was at the, uh, the top uh, here looking at the histogram and the white balance and that. So we're going to move a little bit down below and we're going to be looking at these sliders here. Exposure, recovery, fill lights, black, brightness, and contrast and uh, and we'll see exactly what they do so it'll be exciting we're going to be able to define what each of these tools do so we're going to start off um, by opening up uh, this grayscale JPG uh, to give an idea of kind of uh, what these sliders do and we'll include uh, one of these in the the show notes so you can fool around with it uh, it'll give you a good overall uh, understanding of what happens when you adjust these sliders and kind of what's going to be going on in your photograph uh, and the grayscale is a nice way to kind of determine what exactly is going on. So first of all, our first tool on the exposure slider here, of course, it uh, makes makes sense exactly what this does. It either uh, increases or decreases the exposure of your picture. So uh, what you would expect when you go up uh, in the overexposure, we're going to see, of course, more whites and a lot less uh, blacks happening there and the same thing applies as we go down into the underexposed we're going to see a lot more of the blacks come out and, and a lot more of the uh, the highlights and the whites disappear so that's uh, a fairly drastic slider um, you can mess with the exposure but uh, you'd probably never really go as drastic as either ends uh, of this slider so and so that's the exposure slider. Now the, the recovery slider, uh, you get kind of an indication of what it's doing here. We're going to see a little bit more of what this does uh, in, in a bit here. But basically, when you shoot uh, your camera uh, pictures, uh, you can recover some of the data, especially if you're shooting in RAW format, uh, that is lost. So for example, we're going to just maybe pick a color sample here uh, in the corner here. Uh, of white. So we see up here we got 255, 255, 254. So it's almost completely white. Uh, here's a color. So what the the recovery slider does is it tries to recover some of that last lost data there. So as you move it along you'll notice that if we go all the way to the top we've got a little bit of data, not a whole lot, uh, because there's not much to gain here being that this is a JPEG file. But uh, it recovers some of the the lost data uh, and your whites uh, are not blown out as much and, your, and the same thing applies to your blacks, a little bit darker. So we're going to see that in a little bit, a little bit more detail in the recovery slider there. Moving along now to the fill light slider. Now the fill light kind of works uh, between the tones in the in the mids here into the, your uh, your shadows uh, and your and your midtones is where the fill light kind of brings in uh, some more light here so as you increase that uh, you, you'll notice that these midtones kind of increase the the the, the, the whites and, and the blacks kind of decrease there so you're, you're kind of bringing in a little bit of bounce light um, and increasing your grays and your midtones in that. And we'll see how that applies on some actual photographs in just a bit. Now the blacks channel uh, does kind of what you would think it would do and it brings in some blacks. Uh, so your darks are going to start getting much, much darker. What uh, happens is that the fill light and the black slider kind of work in, in conjunction with each other. So as you bring in your fill light, you'll notice that your blacks are starting to, to disappear. Um, so usually what you'll do is you bring in your fill light and you also want to bring in your blacks back up. So you'll work these two sliders kind of, uh, in, they'll work together. So that's your fill lights and that's your blacks. Uh, double click on that to send it back to its default uh, position. Now, brightness kind of works where fill light works over here. Brightness kind of works on this end of the spectrum. Uh, this is going to work your tones, uh, your midtones, and your highlights. So as you bring in more brightness, uh, you're going to see more of the whites and the light grays uh, are starting to come out, and your blacks are starting to recede. So this is where the uh, the brightness works. You think of it kind of like uh, teeth whitening or brightening uh, your teeth. It's uh, it's going to work on your whites and your and your grays, your your midtones and your highlights. Now contrast, of course, is making your whites whiter and your your blacks blacker. And so as you turn up the contrast, you'll get sort of a, a banding going on. So you're, you'll get a lot of black, uh, a lot of white, and then in your grays as well. So it'll kind of separate things. Uh, the slider kind of gives a nice representation of what exactly is going on here. You kind of got all your mixed colors over here and as you increase your contrast you'll notice that things are banding more and uh, and getting uh, a little bit more defined. So that's uh, how that uh, those contra 
these little sliders work in a nutshell. Um, we're going to see a little bit more detail on, on how they work. Now, first of all, we just want to show you another good reason why you're going to be shooting um, in, in camera raw, if at all possible, in comparison to uh, into JPEGs. So I'll bring up a couple pictures here, uh, one in camera raw and one in JPEG. And you notice this picture is a lot of white. So if I turn on the the clipping indicator here, all this red here is all areas that are clipped where there's no detail. So if we put our our, our, our picker here, we can see that these are 100% white. Uh, so what we can do with the recovery is we can start bringing back some detail into those areas where there's 100% white. So you'll notice as I increase the recovery here, these areas start to disappear. So now let's turn it all the way up and now you'll notice that I got a little bit more color detail in those areas that were once 100% white. And you can see that reflected in the histogram. You can see that it started to slide over a bit as I brought more detail in. So you see if I, I bring it back there, that histogram pushes more to the right. And as I bring it up, that histogram goes to the left. So there's more detail going in there. Now, in comparison, JPEG of the exact same shot here, we have the, the same same type of clipping. Uh, so we'll we'll cl we'll see what happens when we uh, bring in the recovery. And you'll notice something very different. So we start seeing that these areas are starting to get some more detail in there. I go all the way to the top and look. We still have some very large areas where we haven't been able to recover any data or any detail, and that's the problem with JPEG. There's just not enough material or information to work with when you shoot in JPEG in comparison to shooting in RAW. So these details are going to be 100% white. Uh, you can't recover any of those uh, those details. So just a, a thing to remember that uh, in JPEG and shooting in RAW, uh, you got a lot more uh, information to work with when you're shooting in RAW format. So let's go back uh, now to our uh, initial picture that we worked on the white balance before. Let's turn off some of the clipping here. And we'll see how we can kind of slightly improve it using our basic adjustments. So you notice that last time we talked about uh, when we have clipping we have details that uh, are 100% uh, blown out. So in this case let's get our color picker and we'll pick here on on the horse's butt right there. And so we have, we can see here we have 255, 255, 249. So just a tiny little bit of blue in there and all the rest are 100% colored. So that will give us an indication of we, where we want to get our detail back. So we know we got a trouble spot now. So let's turn off that clipping now. So now we want to do a little bit of recovery and we want to maybe push some of the uh, the tones here in the histogram here on the right in the in the highlights. We want to push it a little left. So things that we can do is we can uh, we can kind of uh, pull down the exposure and you'll notice that uh, in our histogram now we got uh, things kind of disappearing on the right here and kind of piling up here more on the left into uh, into the darker areas. So that's one thing we can do and now we notice also in We've also got some detail back in the horse now, because now we're at 249, 240, 227. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, if we didn't like that, we can double click that. Instead, what we could do as well is we could bring uh, in our recovery. And we'll notice that you really can't tell just by looking at the picture, but that's why you have these, these uh, color samplers here. We can see, yes, we have actually gotten some detail back uh, into that area that was 100% white before. So why don't we do just a little bit of both? So we'll maybe bring down a little bit of the exposure, make it a little darker there. We're going to bring up the recovery here and uh, and get back some of those details. Now you start noticing right away that our picture started to get a little dark. Um, and uh, that's where we're going to use some of these other areas to kind of brighten that up. So that's where fill light's going to come in. If you remember, fill light works on those tones between the shadows and the midtones, so we're kind of dark right now. So if we bring in a little fill light, we're going to see these midtones kind of brighten up a bit. So there you go. We can go really extreme, but what happens when you do that, of course, is there's lots of noise that's introduced, and of course, the picture is completely washed out now. But you'll notice in our histogram up in the corner there, uh, we have a uh, looks like a very big peak right in the middle. So we got a lot of midtones, but not much, not much for shadows and not too much for highlights. So that's no good. So let's bring that way down. So now as we bring in the fill light, if you remember the fill light and the blacks work together because now we got quite a bit of the midtones, but we see here that our blacks have started to disappear. So let's bring in some blacks and that will darken up the picture nicely and get, uh, get a little bit more crisp. 
If we want, we can bring up some of the whites again as well uh, in the brightness, and that will increase that uh, there. And then finally, if we want to bring some contrast in, you can see what that slider does. Nice thing about these things is that uh, you can, of course, uh, play extremes on both ends and see exactly what's happening. So we have a very punchy poster-like uh, contrast there, so that's a little too extreme. So let's bring that down a bit there. So there we go. So if you uh, want to see what that looks like before and after, again, you want to use the preview or the P key on your keyboard. So we can preview the before and the after. So you can see we brought a lot more uh, into the uh, the shadows. We've kind of evened things out a bit, made our darks uh, a little darker and our whites. We brought some more detail into that. So it's not too bad. It looks uh, looks fairly good. Another uh, nice shortcut you can use is if uh, you wanted to go back to the original and reset all of those changes you've done uh, and not just do it individually. What you can do is you can hold down the Option uh, key on the Mac or the Alt key on the PC and what it'll do is this Cancel button, when you hold those down, it'll change to a Reset. So again, you hold down that Alt or Option, that changes to Reset, you hit that and it resets your images uh, right back to uh, the default. So there you go. So that's back to the way we started. We can fiddle around with it some more if we like. So that's the basic adjustments in a nutshell from the exposure, recovery, fill lights, blacks, brightness, and contrast. And we're going to be using those basic adjustments almost on every picture uh, that we're going to be doing uh, in the future because uh, they're just a standard uh, adjustments that you want to do on everything that's going to make your pictures look a lot better. So thank you very much. The, the guide to Adobe Camera Raw, the basic adjustments panel.